Today we will learn how to run an elite pick and roll as a screener, handler, and as a duo with your friend. Yes, I'm officially back for the uh, NBA 2K20, so you can expect content from this channel weekly from me again per usual. So recently, obviously, as some of you know, I'm hired by the Bucks, and I've been working as an analyst for them, and I'll be doing that throughout the course of the year, but the channel will remain the same, so you can explain plenty of gameplays and 2K20 tutorials from my channel all year long. So, for this video, you want to be a better handler, pick and roll attacker in 2K in general, not just 19, and you also want to make, you know, 30 to 50 grand in six months playing 2K, well, the best way to achieve those goals is through detailed study of game film of other elite players of the game. Now, this program series likely features 10 possible professional 2K prospects just in this game alone. Shout out to Boop Painter for the stream, and we'll break down one half of film in this one game in detail to improve your pick and roll skills. And the pick and roll duo we will be focusing on is a Reg and Rob from Farewell Gaming who probably right now currently in the uh, post-draft or like end of the year cycle before the professional players come back, they're probably the best pick and roll duo, one of the top ones out there. And you can see with his pick and roll prowess working alongside Rob with his screens, Rag was responsible for scoring 41 of the 46 total points from his team with his points and assists. So his PRF was out like at over close to 90%. Now he's so good at this because he understands pick and roll skills. It's about attacking the four layers of the court. So layer 1 is up court. You can see from here, Reg is dealing with Blue Painter 1 on 1 in this up court scenario. So this is the first problem he has to resolve. And Rob is able to help him out here. He adds in the screen. So this is how he beats off layer 1. So layer 1 is done. He gets into what I call layer 2 because the dual effort from them here wins the battle. And now in layer 2 is where the half court is. Like anticipation in layer 2 is everything. Like Boo wants to steal from the back right there you'll see me circle it up, but Reg was one step ahead of him. So right there, if Reg puts the ball there, that's what Boo wants to steal it. And bang! He does the move, but he brings it back, Boo was late, and Reg, the handler, wins this battle on his own. He was able to beat Boo, make him reach, didn't get the ball, so he's out of position. Now Reg gets into layer 3 on his own, and layer 3 is where it is the mid-range area. And here you can see Reg gets by Boo, but Rob can't pop because he's a pure rim protector, so you know, what's the solution? Well, there's space right there at the elbow where I have targeted for you right there. And what Reg does is what everybody should do is cross back, grab the defender who you just beat. Now it puts the defender behind you. So he was able to grab Boo and he hits the target hole. So now Reg has executed perfectly in all three layers. So the first line of defense has now lost the initial pick and roll battle and the, de the rest of the defense must rotate to cover it up. So the point guard is doing his job here. So Reg and Rob further breaks the first line of defense with a drive and roll into what I call the layer 4, the final layer, which is the paint. And you can see both of them get in there, forcing the defense to break. Sar and Duck from the weak side is now stuck with a very difficult rotation, which they couldn't clean up because they're not guarding one with two. They kind of over collapse, and this leaves Cal wide open on the hash with a pure stretch build. So that's a perfect pick and roll attack at all four layers, but the end result was minus three because Cal misses the shot. And at worst, it's minus three because in transition, Duck hits a free right back. So even though the pick and roll is executed perfectly by Rag and Rob, the rest of the team is gonna help finish. That's the name of the game. So, pick and roll success is about attacking these layers and winning them and then growing that advantage. So you can see Duck here is attacking the farewell defense. He gets a small layer two win with the separation here, but he grows the advantage majorly into a huge advantage by getting tagged to jump. But in a second, in a split second, he reads the fourth layer wrong, which is like the paint and the baseline and corners area. He reads it wrong, so he loses all the advantage in a split second because he throws an unnecessary turnover, even though he had layer two completely won. He should have won into layer three, but he didn't. Now, in this instance, you will see Reg grow his advantage. So the layer one battle was already won by Reg here, the pressing didn't work, and Rod, with a clean, you know, solid screen, puts the defense behind. And now Glow must deal with Reg 1v1 in layer 2. So, and we can watch Reg grow his advantage. So he's already beat layer 1 cleanly, but he's still gonna grow his advantage in layer 2, which is the half court to, you know, finish the possession off. He does just that, finish it up, and scores himself 2 points. So by now, you really need to understand, like, the pick and roll attack is about dealing with all 4 layers well. Individually, as the handler, and also as a duo with your screener or as your screening mate. 
And in this instance, Fu actually won the layup one battle versus Rack. He was able to pin him off, push him off. There's nowhere Rack can go. So he's gonna trust Rob. So Rob shows his value here as he actually takes the rock and wins back layer one for his point guard. And Rob successfully gets the ball back to Rec in layer two. And Rob was able to resolve the layer one problem that Rec couldn't this time. And together, Rec and Rob breaks Boo in layer two in the half court, putting Rec once again 1v1 versus Glow in layer three. And once again, Rec beats the hedge defender in layer three because Glow didn't stay attached to Rec long enough. And also, that which gave Boo a very poor recovery angle. And once again, that's the target hole right there. That's where the empty space is. All of that work created that space, and Rec hits that hole in the layer 4, and once again finishes up. Once again, pick and roll attack, beating all four layers. So in this instance, Rec deals with layer 1 just fine here. He gets by Boo, he gets in the layer 2, you know, with a dribble. And Boo plays really solid defense here. So Rec couldn't really make much of it. He couldn't make the most out of his attack in layer 2. You can see Boo with excellent on-ball defense. This is not really a bad shot, but it's not great either. This is like yellow. So Boo with a slight win here, because the defense locked it up. But the possession is not over yet. As the screener, you have to understand, like, you will see Rob here. He flats out, wins his battle in layer 4 on his own. He was able to, you know, his roll and rebound tracking won the battle and got, his, got the ball back and got his team plus 2. So that's called finishing off the possession, right? Because that, that was Rob doing it for Rec. Now you can watch Boo and Glow in this instance though, win and defend every pick and roll layer in this possession. Like Glow was able to find his hedging group and also great pinch by Saw and also great recovery. And in this instance, the pick and roll attack led to nothing. Now there was a small opportunity here as the screener, sometimes you need to see these things and Rob missed it here. Like there is a slip read here, a slip read for a split second because the defense was open for a split in the paint but Rob didn't do that instead he kind of reset which was not the right call because if he was able to split there he would have forced the you know defense to rotate but he didn't this is not bad but the corner pass this corner pass really needs to lock in nothing and the offense has been denied so in this instance Boo and Glow completely shut this off so that's good pick and roll defense and that's something for Rob to learn to help you know Rag better with that early slip that he missed. Now a quarter had passed here and the defense is getting better but both sides are now beginning to make adjustments naturally because now we're going into the second quarter right? Now this was a problem for the defense in the previous quarter where Boo keep getting you know back pinned by Rob in layer 1 but Boo and Glow is now adjusting better. You can see in this instance Boo is kind of expecting all of this. He's a great defender so he adjusted and fantastic hedge containment by Glow here. He you know he's also getting the rhythm thing so Boo now has an angle to go under and recover back to Rec. He does just that. This is practically shut down. Excellent defense. Great. And this would have worked perfect because the pinch here by Sar at this instance is perfect. This pinch and contain is perfect. But he took an extra step further as you see there. Right there. That misstep by Sar was all Reg needed as Boo got bumped off a little and he couldn't get back in front of Reg and Sar had to recover back. And that's all the space Reg needed to beat right there at the elbow because he got to his spot early and saw with a little bit of a miss pinch cost the team two points. Now watch Rec and how he readjusts the angle of the pick and roll attack as he gets a handoff here into layer two from Rob. He readjusts, gets to the wing. Now this is a far more superior angle of the attack instead of just going from the middle. He didn't do that so he puts himself in great position and Rec uses a series of crabs and ball screens here to get himself away from Boo right there screen crab screen crab and now he's in the layer 3 in the mid range once again 1v1 versus glow in the mid range area in layer 3 and glow did a poor job of hedging here and has left a wide open hole in layer 4 and as we have seen from Rec in this game he once again hits the hole correctly and finishes up he creates space and he hits the hole all the time and that's what you're gonna do as a pick and roll attacker now Rec is legit because he can consistently put the defense behind the play in all layers and you can see here again, the defense is already kind of behind in layer 1. He successfully crabs Boo in layer 2. And then Rob, being the good screener that he is, slips immediately, forces Glow to switch on the reg. But Boo, in this instance, hesitates for a second on the switch, gives up the roll, and that's another easy 2 points. Another great pick and roll attack that 
everybody can learn and imitate from, from right there. So there's so much initial pressure from a rag pick and roll attack, you can kind of tell the defense is breaking apart now. As good as Boo and Glow is, in some instances, you can still, they're having a little bit of a miscommunication because of all the pressure Rag is bringing on his own. And that opens up a lot of rolling spaces for Rob. And appreciate the quickness yet patience of Rag here to force a switch, draw it out, and then find a better shot. Same thing here, a little bit of miscommunication from all the dribble, you know, attack from Rag. Forces a switch, patience, vision, gets Rob in another nice dead zone. Aliu. So, let's summarize the key takeaways in that half right there, then you should leave with today. Make sure to remember the following points to help grow your game, that your pick and roll game, or your screening game to the next level. What is really happening here, when you play the game yourself, maybe you don't see it as, hey, if I'm running a pick and roll, you don't see it as you need to do well in four layers against the defense. You have to get the ball up court, you have to get it into half court, and from half court, you got to put the defense behind you. So you either get a shot, a free, or you put it behind you and you get extra space to attack the mid-range. And once you're in the mid-range, you might be facing a hedge defender or a switch, and then from that, you have to create another extra breakage so you can get into ideally either a mid-range shot for yourself, or you find, you know, like a target space or empty space so you can attack layer 4 into the paint, which Rec is very, very good at. A high-level point guard will be able to create space in all four layers consecutively in one possession. And you can see from time and time again in this game, in this half, in this context, right, it's not the whole series because Boo's team actually won this series. But in this game, Greg was able to use his pick and roll skills and break everything. And in the end of this game specifically, you can see Rag leaves a huge impact that can't be denied in this game. His team only really scores 46 points in this instance. But he was able to, through his scoring and assists, be responsible for over 40 points. So essentially, the handler, the pick and roll attacker, Reg, in this game, was being on the court, doing what he does. He was responsible for 90% of his team points. That's a staggering number. Now, is that usage healthy? Probably not. But what, it, what that really shows is his ability to be able to carry that load. I mean, how many players can do this? And you have to understand, this was Shump. Like, the on-board defender is no slouch. This is a difficult defense to deal with. And, you know, he executed, he held out of his end of the bargain. But does this mean Rag is one of the best guards ever? Nobody knows. But what you really have to ask yourself is, how many guards can be given this workload and deliver this many amount of, you know, what I call PRF, which is, you know, points responsible for. Like, be given this load, create this amount of PRF with this efficiency. I mean, the man is 8 for 11, 2 or 4 from deep, with only 1 turnover, 18 points, 11 assists. That is staggering. And that, something like this needs to be broken down to this level, would be truly appreciated. So shout out to Rec for all that. And the defense will also, you know, holding him to probably less because I mean look at what he can do even against a defense that's solid. So as always thanks for coming by. If you want the gameplay your gameplay to be broken down but in this nature just send it over to me. If the game interests me I will definitely do it. I will also offer you know the usual gameplay tutorials that I do all year long but uh, this is probably something I'll also focus on because I am uh, working as an analyst for the Bucks now and there's a lot of responsibilities. This is one of them. So if you like it add me a like leave any questions in the comment section I'll you know give yourself some pointers and also you know break it down yourself it's regularly as good as I think or as I presented him to be here uh, I'll also do more you know content from this series as I go on but uh, that's it for today and as always happy to be back and I'll see all of you next time